Welcome to Lecture 5, Part B. In this section, we will look at the aspects we need to take into consideration when conducting the experimental design. We're going to identify how we will design our experiment by means of identifying our responses, factors and levels. We will then look at how we will run the experiment and collect the data. And then finally, we will identify how we will analyze the experimental data, draw conclusions, and perform confirmatory experiments. In relation to the responses or the outputs of our experiment, these need to be measurable. The responses will also be those characteristics which are critical to quality, and the earlier phases of our domain process will have identified those. It will also have identified those from our analyze phase, which aspects we need to optimize or improve. We will now look at identifying the factors and their levels. In order to identify the factors and their levels, we need knowledge of the process. This will largely have been gained from our cause and effect diagram. This will have shown which factors will require further experimentation. For example, quantitative could be temperature. We could set the temperature to 120 degrees or 100 degrees. Qualitative could be the position of a valve, open or closed. It could also be the type of popcorn whether it's buttered or salted. The levels chosen should be realistic and practical. If we test at 100 degrees and 101 degrees temperature, this may have little influence on the output or the response of our process. This may not mean that temperature doesn't have an influence, it just means that it doesn't matter whether we run our process at 100 degrees or 101 degrees. So clearly, the levels that we choose should be realistic. We will often identify the levels by identifying the amount of variation that's already been observed in our process. We may identify the levels that we should experiment at by evaluating our process and seeing how those variables vary naturally throughout the running of our process. We will typically evaluate the factors at two levels. These will be referred to as high and low. For example, if we're testing at 100 degrees, it could be referred to as the low level, while 120 degrees could be referred to as the high level. We will also more commonly refer to these via their coded variables. So minus one would refer to the low level and plus one would refer to the high level. Let's take the example of the pen holder and the cause and effect diagram associated with that. We may find that the inner diameter is too great and we may be interested in identifying how we can resolve this problem. We will have developed this cause and effect diagram, we may then identify other factors which require further analysis or experimentation. So we may be interested in experimenting with the coolant, the coolant reservoir and the drill bit and seeing what effect or how we can set these so as to achieve the target inner diameter with little variability in our process. We will next select the experimental design. There are a number of experimental designs that we can choose. The simplest one is the full factorial, where we run all combinations of factor levels. In the fractional factorial, we will only run a subset of all the combinations that are possible, but it has to be a specific subset. We cannot choose this subset at random. In Taguchi experiments, we will use orthogonal arrays and signal to noise ratios. In a screening experiment, we will often evaluate a large number of factors in a small number of experiments with a view not to understanding how the process operates, but largely to identify which factors we need to perform further experimentation on and which factors we can possibly ignore as part of the optimization of our process. We will spend some time looking at the full factorial designs. In a full factorial design, all possible treatment combinations of levels are tested. There is a specific notation associated with a two-level factorial design, and it's 2 to the power of k, where k refers to the number of factors. Now, this notation is very useful because it also identifies the number of experiments we will need to perform. The usefulness of full factorials is that they actually form the building blocks for much more complex designs, such as the fractional factorial designs and even the screening experiments. 
Let's take the 2 to the power of k factorial design. k refers to the number of factors. A 2 to the power of 2 design means that we're evaluating two factors at two levels. Now, if we put 2 to the power of 2 into our calculator, it'll give us 4. So that tells us our four treatment combinations or four experiments associated with evaluating two factors at two levels. A 2 to the power of 3 means that we will evaluate three factors at two levels. 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. So that means we're going to conduct eight treatment combinations or eight experiments. And so on. Let's take the example of 2 to the power of 5. This means with this experiment, we can evaluate five factors where each of these factors is at two levels. And 2 to the power of 5 gives us 32, so there are 32 treatment combinations associated with this experiment. Now, in a two-level design, the levels are referred to as high and low. And these, as stated earlier, can be quantitative or qualitative. More commonly, the notation minus 1 and plus 1 denotes the high and the low level. We will now need to perform the experiment. And it's important that we plan the experiment beforehand to avoid mistakes while conducting the experiment. We need to perform a number of trial runs to make sure that everyone is familiar with what factors need to change, how the data has been recorded, and that the levels are appropriately set. We also need to randomize the order in which we conduct the experiments. This will allow us at a later point to evaluate whether the experiment was conducted correctly or not. We also need to decide on the number of replications. This refers to the number of times we are going to evaluate each treatment combination. We would like to avoid huge experiments because in these experiments, the number of experiments we conduct is particularly large. And there is always the danger in large experiments that we can make some mistake. Somebody may have set the factors and factor levels incorrectly with the result that we end up with a response that is inconsistent with the rest of the data. We would also like to experiment sequentially and iteratively. It's much better to perform smaller experiments which build on the information that we've gained in a previous experiment and use this information to then plan the next experiment. Let's take the example of a 2 to the power of 2 experiment. Here we have two factors A and B. We have also one interaction, AB, and 2 to the power of 2 means we have four treatment combinations. The A we see column factor A has two levels, a minus and a plus. Similarly for factor B, our interaction we see also have a plus and a minus. In the first case, plus 1 for AB is determined by multiplying the minus 1 of A by the minus 1 of B. So minus 1 by minus 1 is plus 1. Next row plus 1 by minus 1 is minus 1. Third row, minus 1 by plus 1 is minus 1. And in the fourth row, plus 1 by plus 1 is plus 1. So we see here our design matrix for our 2 to the power of 2 experiment. In the case of the statopult, the response is the distance the ball travels. There are a number of factors which affect this response. These are the cup position, the pin position, the stop position, and the start angle. Also, the type of ball that we propel. We can consider the statopult to be a process. The objective of this process is to achieve a specified target distance. We could attempt to achieve this target distance using trial and error, although this is particularly slow and there is no guarantee of success. We can relate this to the catapult or our statopult. If we want to optimize the distance that the ball travels, then there are a number of factors which influence that. There's the material, the machine, the man, the method, and so on. So this is our cause and effect diagram for this process. However, specifically, we want to experiment with two of these factors. And in this case, we're going to experiment with the stop position and the start angle. And these will be the two factors which we're going to use in this experiment. We're going to take stop position 2 and stop position 3. Our 2 will be our low level or minus 1, and stop position 3 will be our high level or plus 1. And we see the stop position reflected here. Our second factor is the start angle. We will evaluate this at two levels. 
160 degrees and 170 degrees. The low will be 160 degrees and the high will be 170 degrees. And we can achieve this angle by pulling the lever back in this direction. Our next step is to conduct this experiment. And when we evaluate the stop position at stop position 2 or minus 1 and the start angle at 160 degrees or minus 1, we achieve a distance of 160 centimetres. We then conduct the next set of experimental conditions and continue on and get the following results. For the last treatment combination, when we set the stop position to 3 and the start angle to 170 degrees, we achieve a distance of 310 centimetres. This concludes part B of lecture 5, where we're conducting the DOE. In the next section, we will look at analysing the data from this experimental design. Thank you.